Welcome. Welcome to SGS Live. It's great to have you all with us. I'm Linda Cavalera. I'm a General Manager of Sales and Marketing for SGS Australia. Today, we have John Woods with us. Welcome, John. Hi, Linda. Thank you for uh, inviting me today to give a talk on uh, the Bulk Site Technologies. Wonderful. Thank you. So, John is our Global New Technology Manager at SGS. He's a professional scientist and business developer with over 20 years industrial experience working in a wide range of different scientific disciplines, including geology, environmental science, and chemical engineering. John remains directly involved with geological interpretation and assisting clients with sampling strategies and project design, as well as highly successful business development. So our topic today is bauxite analysis and the new technologies, better understanding the future planning. So before we dive into the conversation with John, I invite you, the audience, to be an active participant and feel free to post any questions or comments or where you're from in the chat and we'll do our best to address them as we go. We'll also have some uh, questions we've received from you already. Okay, so John, let's kick off. Tell us a little bit about what is bauxite anyway. Uh, well, bauxite is the ore for uh, making aluminium, and so um, we find it uh, worldwide, and it's a very important uh, material. Um, we, the bauxite industry is worth in the order of uh, $10 billion per year, and uh, it's likely to grow by 3% plus per year over the next 10 years. So why is it important? It's important uh, because uh, aluminium uh, is a very light, strong metal. And um, increasingly, as we want to improve the efficiency of, for example, uh, electric cars, you want um, a strong uh, material that's lightweight in order to extend, for example, um, how far uh, an electric car will go because you're reducing the weight, you're reducing the energy required. So it helps to improve energy efficiency. And of course, it's the key material, which is uh, the infrastructure of, uh, of planes, for example. So um, mm -hmm. as air travel becomes uh, ever more prevalent um, and we need more planes, uh, there's an ever increasing demand for aluminium. Right, so where do you find bauxite? And well, bauxite's found all around the world, um, but uh, there are two major types of bauxite um, those that are found in tropical regions and those that are found in uh, non tropical regions. So they're geologically quite different. Um, predominantly, uh, most bauxite is. Um, is obtained in the tropical regions and um, Australia. Uh, Sub-Saharan Africa um, are two of the major areas where bauxite is mined. Right. So you talked about the different qualities of bauxite. Is that to do with the quality of bauxite or is it just different types of bauxite? Um, it's partly to do with the quality of the bauxite. Um, bauxite is mm. composed of a, of a number of different minerals and those mineral contents um, differ depending on how the bauxite's um, geologically formed. So um, a higher purity bauxite is the, is the one that uh, miners prefer to go for. Right, okay. And what's the risk of lo uh, using the low quality bauxite? If you use low quality bauxite, um, you have to invest much more energy in the extraction process. So if you have a more diverse range of aluminium forming minerals, uh, so not just simply gibbsite, but some of the other minerals like behemite, etc., cetera, um, then you have to use a much more higher energy um, extraction process, uh, which is called the Bayer process. And um, so much more energy is involved, so it's less environmentally friendly. Um, also, some of the lower quality bauxites, you've got more risk of having uh, minerals and therefore elements which are deleterious to the extraction process. So, for example, um, minerals containing large amounts of iron. So that's minerals like uh, hematite and girthite uh, can be, um, have a very negative impact. 
also um, minerals with the wrong type of silica. So what's called reactive silica, if that's too high, that will have a negative effect on the extraction process. And finally, um, minerals containing titanium, so anatases, etc. again, they can have a surprisingly negative effect on the extraction process. So they significantly reduce what's called the available alumina. Right. You mentioned earlier um, a couple of examples of how bauxite is used, but how big is the market? And the bauxite market um, is many billions of tons per year are extracted, um, 10 billion US dollars approximately per year. And that's an ever in increasing market, uh, particularly driven by um, production in, in China uh, and also in some of the other regions of the world, predominantly China with its large um, building processes and manufacturing processes is a strong driver behind uh, the bauxite market. And, and are there any obstacles in obtaining it or testing this product? Um, yes, it's quite a tricky material to actually um, analyse. Um, from the mineralogical side of things, um, there's a lot of minerals which are, um, I guess, what you would call um, difficult to analyse by more traditional technologies uh, because they are, um, interplay with one another. So, for example, the clay minerals and the key minerals, actually, um, of which bauxite is formed, are difficult to analyse by traditional XRD technologies. Um, also, um, the technique that we use to analyse bauxite uh, to determine its, its value, as it were, uh, which is called uh, the bomb digest technology, um, is actually quite expensive and it has uh, quite significant errors associated with it. So bauxite is difficult to determine from the geological property side of things, the minerals, but also uh, difficult for analysis and expensive to analyze by um, the traditional uh, technologies which imitate what happens in the actual production plants. Okay, so you've mentioned about the traditional technology. What about mm -hmm. the new technologies? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure, yes. Uh, well, SGS is always at the forefront of developing uh, new technologies, and we've been doing just that uh, for the bauxite industry. So we've been developing a technology called uh, Fourier Transform Infrared Spectroscopy, which is a bit of a mouthful, um, <laughs> but it actually looks at um, the infrared part of the spectrum and how uh, the bonds um, in minerals sort of wibble and wobble. So the more they wibble and wobble, the more of a particular bond you have present, and those bonds relate to the key properties of bauxite. Uh, so, for example, uh, available alumina has particular bonds associated with that, and so we can apply this technology to give us very accurate results, but also um, at a much lower cost, indeed an order of magnitude lower than using the traditional technologies Right. Okay. So that's one of the advantages you're saying with this new technology mm -hmm. is, I guess, the speed and the cost. Is that right? That's right. It also has mm. the advantage of being able to uh, determine a lot of analytes at the same time. So mm. more traditionally, uh, the traditional technologies for analysis of bauxite would be bomb digest for the available alumina and reactive silica, X-ray diffraction for the minerals, and then something called iron chromatography for some of the other uh, properties like sulfate contents, carbonate contents. Um, but you can obtain all of these analytes from the one technology. So the FTIR will actually allow you to determine all of those analytes simultaneously and far more rapidly. So rather than it taking um, shall we say months for if you've got a large drilling campaign to get your data back we can you can analyze hundreds of samples per day per instrument um, to, and give you all of the analytes that sounds so it's a game changer it's a yeah. real game changer that sounds amazing so um, can you tell us about the how easy it is to adopt from a customer point of view and give us maybe sure. an example or two uh, yes, well, I mean, we're working with quite a few of the major um, aluminium uh, or should I say bauxite miners um, at the moment here in Australia and also uh, for exploration projects in um, sub-Saharan Africa. And it's a, certainly a very easy technology to 
to bring into play. Uh, what we do is we usually analyze a fixed number of samples by the more traditional technological approaches that people are, are comfortable with, familiar with, um, for example, like the Bomb Digest, like the XRD, and we use that um, to calibrate the FTIR so that it gives the same sort of uh, quality of results that we'd expect from those technologies. And we can also do what's called matrix matching it to your particular asset so that um, the results have uh, the maximum amount of accuracy uh, that's, that's feasibly possible. The technology effectively can give you results which are just as reliable as the a more traditional approach. And it's very easy to adopt. This technology is very compact. It can be used um, on site. Indeed, uh, one of these instruments uh, fits on uh, an A4 uh, piece of paper. Wow, oh, that's incredible. Yeah. So yeah. tell us a little bit about the actual deliverables that this FTIR gives off in a single analysis. I know you mentioned a couple sure. of things before, but if you want to elaborate, perhaps. Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, well, it takes approximately two minutes to get each, uh, so to analyze and get all of the analytes from a sample. Um, so it's simultaneous, so it's very rapid. And the analytes that you'll be able to, um, to get are uh, available alumina, which is the most important, uh, reactive silica. You'll be able to get uh, the key mineral content, so things like uh, the gibbsite content, uh, the hematite content, behemite content, uh, kaolinite, uh, quartz, and any of the titanium um, containing minerals. You'll also be able to get the total organic carbon content, the total carbonate content, uh, the total sulfate content and the oxalate content. So those are all extremely important. And you can give it, you can also use it for not quite as good as traditional technology, but a semi quantitative total uh, aluminium content, total iron content, uh, total titanium content, and total uh, silica content. So it's the full uh, range of analytes that you'd want for a bauxite analysis. That's great. Thanks, John, for that. So um, how does the data and QC compare to the traditional technology then? Well, we're very thorough in how we deal with um, QC at SGS. It's very important to us uh, that um, clients um, are comfortable and secure um, in the data that we provide for them. So we have um, a quality system called G6. So all of our analytical techniques have to pass this standard. Uh, and we have also, when we're carrying out analysis, a key set of um, internationally recognized uh, certified reference materials included in our analysis to make sure that the data effectively shows no drift, etc. cetera. Um, and the methods themselves are as accurate as the technologies on which they are based. So for example, for, av for available alumina and, to and uh, reactive silica, which we get by the bomb digest technique, um, that has a error value of between uh, seven and 10%. And those same sorts of values of accuracy will be obtained with the, uh, the FTIR. Um, some other techniques like, for example, the organic content, where you can have an error value of 5% using the traditional technology, we can achieve that 5% degree of accuracy uh, with the FTIR as well. So it matches uh, the QC properties of all the technologies on which the data is based. Uh, the maximum or, or highest quality of accuracy from our detailed research of FTIR that we can achieve is, is plus or minus 5%, which is as good as any other technique on the market today. Mm. Sounds great. So what technology combinations do you recommend for on-site um, operations and how can we supply in mobile um, lab units as well? Um, yes, well, for on-site analysis, for um, whether it's whether it's um, drilling campaigns and you're wanting to, to monitor the data coming off or whether it is that you're um, wanting to engage in a, a pre-feasibility study, uh, we would recommend a combination of X-ray fluorescence or XRF technology, which obtains elemental contents 
and the FTIR to give you the um, the mineralogical contents and the the property contents, so the available alumina um, and reactive silica. So using those two technologies in combination will give you the best quality of results. We also suggest that 20% of your samples are also sent away to our uh, one of our worldwide laboratories where we supply these analytical services using the more traditional technologies to act as, as counter checks to make sure that there's no significant changes in your deposit, which for any reason the FTIR and the XRF used on site um, are not compensating for. And as these units are both very compact, both the uh, the, the XRF itself is, is very compact, it's a benchtop instrument, and the FTIR, as already mentioned, is, is a small benchtop instrument which was which requires no gas supplies or anything fancy. Um, the two can be used together easily in a mobile uh, sample unit uh, placed on site and can analyze uh, hundreds of samples a day. In fact, the limiting factor with these instruments isn't actually their ability to analyze, as has been the problems previously uh, for uh, service providers, but actually how quickly you can prepare the samples. So it, it's literally, literally is limited by, by sample prep. So that's a huge step forward. Uh, that's um, hundreds of samples per day as, as opposed to, to tens. So you oh, can keep up with drilling campaigns, make decisions on site. Yeah, that's significant leap forward, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. So um, what distinguishes SGS from other service providers then? I think there's a number of things which um, distinguish SGS. Um, one of them, obviously, is our, our thirst and desire to, um, to develop new technologies and bring those into the marketplace. To, to bring game-changing technologies um, that, that can really make a difference. Um, also, our ability to provide all the services that a client needs. So we can provide not only the, the analytical technologies associated with working out how good or not a deposit is, but we can also provide the environmental analysis services and with our uh, trade section, we can also carry out the trade analysis at ports. So we can give you effectively the, we can provide a one-stop shop. Literally the whole of the services that you require, SGS can provide to you as a client. Wonderful. So before we throw to um, some of the questions from the audience, um, how do I find out more about this? Where do I go? Um, there's, there's a number of different ways that you can um, find out about these new services. Um, obviously, you can go on to our um, SGS website uh, and contact us through that, whether it be uh, looking at service provision or whether it be actually uh, having uh, a service that you require and you'd like to get a quote for. So you can go through, our, as I say, our, our international website or regionally, uh, you can contact your local um, sales representative and they can forward any questions um, to the relevant experts um, and provide you with a quote. Wonderful. Thank you for that. Um, so I believe we've got some questions from the audience. Mm -hmm. We've got one from Pauline. Um, what was the process and mindset behind this technology and how environmentally friendly is it? Okay, um, the thoughts behind the technology were um, number one, to have a service which without reducing the quality of the service provides a much more cost effective um, uh, approach. So, so to effectively save the customers um, a considerable amount of, of money uh, and yet still to provide the highest quality of service. Uh, secondly was that it provides the customer with more information. So usually for a customer to, for example, engage in a detailed mineralogical analysis study would be extremely expensive. And by, but by not doing so, they, they don't get the understanding of their asset that maybe they would like. Um, so with this technology, we're able to provide all that information, which will give them a much deeper understanding and in doing so, a better opportunity to optimize um, the, their deposit and, and make more make a more effective um, mining program, 
which reduces the need to mine areas which will not be productive, and therefore that mm. reduces energy expenditure and environmental damage. Um, and the technologies themselves, um, I take the case of the FTIR, uh, there's no acids involved in the analysis. There's no um, um, gas supplies, so you've got no, no expense and no environmental, Im environmental impact to providing um, compressed gases. So you're actually having an analytical system which is uh, less damaging to the environment, uh, a, a smaller footprint. Mm, that's excellent. So thank you for that question, Pauline. Uh, I believe we have a couple more questions. Um, so when did you start offering this technology to clients? Um, we developed it, um, I think it was a couple of years ago now, and uh, we've been offering it to clients for the last 12 months. So we've already got a number of the major players um, involved, um, and you will be seeing some uh, published papers coming out um, over the next um, 12 to 18 months, uh, which will very thoroughly illustrate the quality of, of the data and the speed of which we're producing it. Um, so yes, approximately the past 12 months, and we're looking to appreciably expand that market. I mean, anybody in the bauxite space, mm -hmm. it's, it's really a technology to, to, to sit up and take attention and, mm -hmm. and, and get involved with. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Are there any hurdles from a customer perspective? Um, I think there's always, we always prefer to, to do the matrix matching. So there is a, t a little time involved with, with setting up your asset to make sure that the, that, that the technology that we're applying is appropriate to your asset. But that's the only real, I mean, you'd expect that anyway, to, to set up a matrix match method for a deposit so that the client can get the most out of it. So that's the only real hurdle involved. So we usually recommend that if you're wanting to apply this technology, that you send some some samples in advance for the full range of analysis. So we set up the calibration. So generally speaking, that would take two to three months before you actually plan to go ahead with operation. Great. Um, another question from the audience is, how much experience does SGS have with this new technology? Um, we've got quite a lot of experience with using infrared technologies. We've been using infrared uh, for many, many years. Um, but these new sort of developments in, F in FTIR, which are largely associated not only with different types of detector, which have come onto the market, but also the ability to utilize um, artificial intelligence in the interpretive aspects. Um, yes, it's, it's quite new. So yes, the past 12 months. Right, okay, great. Um, did you have anything else you wanted to add before we close up? Because I can't see that we have any more questions from the audience at the moment. Um, well, I think one of the questions that's maybe come, come up is sample preparation. Right. So um, it's exactly the same as one would do for XRF analysis. So the samples need to be 70% uh, passing um, 150 microns and uh, dry. So the samples do need to be um, basically broken down, uh, dried, and ground to a certain degree. But this is the standard sort of pulp that you would produce um, in a bauxite manufacturing process. So um, it's, it's stan the standard sample size that you would apply for most uh, bauxite analytical operations will work absolutely fine for the FTIR, and we've thoroughly tested that. Okay, that's great. Thank you for that. And I believe also there's a question about um, analysis of agricultural soils. And the answer to that is yes, we oh, are yeah. engaged in programs uh, for soils analysis using both near IR and also um, FTIR technologies. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to be a little bit limited about saying too much, but what we will be able to do, um, or should I say what we've already achieved to a certain degree, is the capability not only to determine the mineralogical contents of soils and the organics contents, uh, but we will be looking at providing a surface which also service which also classifies the soils um, in the similar sort of like European Union soil classification. So you'll be able to determine whether it's a shall we say um, a loam, a calcareous loam, a sandy loam, um, and this has some interesting applications in agriculture for. Um, not only optimizing 
the type of um, fertilizer systems that you use or drainage planning. Uh, but also, um, I've got a particular interest in the, um, in the wine production side of things for vineyards, where we'll be able to actually look at the terroir of um, individual uh, vineyards and even uh, individual vine sections so that you could actually modify the soils to produce the, um, the optimal uh, wine from that particular region. So you've got a vested interest here, John. <laughs> always, always in wine. <laughs> I love it. Um, another question is, do the samples require sample preparation? Um, they do, yes. Um, as I say, it's, it's the samples need to be dried and ground to 70% uh, passing 150 micron, which is the standard um, sample preparation for um, bauxite pulps. Wonderful. Great. Um, I can't see any questions at the moment. Um, did you have anything else you wanted to add, John, before we finish up? Um, yes, really. That um, FTIR is one of our very much expanding technologies. Um, we are, as I say, already heavily involved with bauxite. We're moving into the agricultural sector, um, but the technology also has applications for, uh, for pegmatites in the lithium industry and applications uh, in the iron ore sector um, for determining the different mineralogies associated with um, iron extraction and properties. Uh, it's particularly strong for the determination of clay minerals or the minerals which are difficult to determine by more traditional technologies such as XRD. Wonderful. Well, thank you, John, for sharing your wealth of experience. And, um, and I hope everyone has found this hugely informative and valuable. Um, so we'll close off for then for today. If you have any questions outside of this um, live event, please um, include them in the chat and we can do a follow up at a later time. Um, and for now, it's goodbye. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye.